Welcome to Slash Forward, the channel where what you want, you get. So we're here again examining the horror of out-of-control primates with the 1990 film Shockma. If you side with the monkeys in the upcoming Human Monkey Wars, you should subscribe to the channel. Let's get to it. We open an operating room where Professor Sorensen spreads what appears to be a mouth as the students look on. He then very slowly and carefully completes the procedure by injecting a fluid into the orifice. So it's pretty good and necessary that he cut him open like that. We then transition to Bradley, putting the final touches on Sam's special sword and sorcerer game they'll be playing that evening, in which they utilize the building as a virtual dungeon and have to solve riddles and receive clues from the game master. Sam then moves on to paint a pretty picture for Tracy's wonderful life as his future wife. Stay home and and cook my meals and like mend my socks and give me little Sam's. Oh, you sweet summer child. But before they finalize the details, Richard and Gary arrive with Shakma, Sam's favorite subject, fresh out of surgery. We learn he's been injected with an aggression inhibiting drug they're testing. The kicker is, for reasons completely unknown to them, sometimes it acts as an aggression encourager. So they're hoping for everyone's continued health and happiness that everything went well here. They don't have to wait long though as your boy pops up with a toothy surprise. The high your primates all flail about as Sam sets up the trank stick and puts him back to sleep. Sorensen responds to the alarm that was set off and gives the bad news that the protocol for failed experiments is death. We then watch as Gary lazily disengages the alarm with a hard shutdown. While back in the lab, Richards attempts to get into the game so he can burrow up Sorensen's ass, distracts Sam enough to cause him to select the wrong tincture from the shelf. So, as they make plans to set Richard up as the dungeon nemesis, Shakma gets a huge dose of… something. In the aftermath, we see that Sam has a sad, and Richard's advice, if he wants to be a successful successful doctor is to kill the parts of him that feel empathy. He then demonstrates this by smiling like an absolute maniac as he fills out the paperwork for the dead baboon. Before he can incinerate the body, Sorensen pops in to request it be preserved so he can perform a necropsy the next day. As Richard wraps up, there's a movement from Shakma's hand which catches his attention. However, Richard is a dumb asshole, and then he's distracted by his girl Laura, who is disappointed to learn that he's pretty much blowing off a sure thing with her in order to play fantasy quest with his buddies. Then Richard's little sister Kim arrives. She'll be acting as the game's princess and she seems to have eyes for Sam. She chastises him for viewing her as a mere girl, so he steps back to soak in her blooming womanhood. And now that we've worked our way through the maze of contrivances they felt were necessary to set up this otherwise simple plot, we return at nightfall to see things begin to get violent in the monkey pen. But it does appear we still arrived a bit too early as everyone's sitting around waiting for the final setup so the game can begin. In their boredom, they decide to put a little skin in the game, each putting in $500 for the win and sealing the deal with a traditional hand smear. Then Richard rolls up and asks Laura to give him a few hours, and then finally checks in with the group. After getting his instructions from the Game Master, he sets out to finish turning off certain lights and take his first position. Then Sorensen locks the building up tight so no one can escape. The game. And then they begin. Let the game begin. Right, that's what I s- ah, whatever. As they begin, Kim is hopeful her savior will be Sam. I have a little surprise. A surprise? We'll see. Although his failure could result in a delightfully awkward outcome, the students get to adventure in and check in with the Game Master, and it is just a hoot. Bradley demonstrates an early dominance, hamming it up and even acquiring two extra keys from the demon room. Richard wants to get back to Laura before she cools off, so he declines to capture Bradley's soul in order to speed up the game, much to Sorensen's chagrin. Luckily, for the sake of game pacing, Bradley's pathway leads him to the specimen room, where he thinks he hears Richard, so he whispers carefully, I think I just heard Nemesis. I'm going into the specimen room, over. Creeping us all out, and then takes a stash of immobilizing crystals for protection. Unfortunately, he ends up in Shockma's realm, and his rage boner provides plus 10 immunity from immobilizing effects. And in this manner, we lose the best thing about this film so far, Bradley's acting choices. Sorensen decides to ramp up the game difficulty and has Richard switch rooms after swinging through to check on Bradley first. The room seems empty, but then he hears the crackle of a radio and dons his mask for an epic fantasy prank. He's initially concerned that the joke may be on him, however, when he finds a bloody radio. Video. But then the subsequent discovery of Bradley's body indicates this ain't no joke. He makes it to a closet just in time, and while we get a shot clear up Shakma's rosy red ass, Richard whips up an open container of hydrochloric acid. Some may consider this an accident waiting to happen, and they would be correct as he nearly immediately succumbs to his acid injuries with violent baboon comorbidities. Sam and Tracy meet up and are comparing notes when Sorensen lets them know he's heading down to check on Richard. Despite there being $500 riding on the outcome, Sam decides to take a break, convincing 
convincing Tracy to join him when he flashes that winning smile, a development that would certainly disappoint Kim as she tarts herself up in the princess suite. Sorensen notices blood on the floor and goes in cautiously, finding Richard on the ground still sizzling. Bafflingly, he goes in with a two-handed breaststroke. Then he touches himself, putting him at risk of being mounted by Shakma, as the pattern created looks like teats. Sure enough, Shakma arrives and they steer each other down. Sorensen is so in awe of the majestic beast that he can't get the door closed before being welcomed into his warm embrace. Sam hears and recognizes the sound of a distressed baboon, but they can't get the elevator moving as it's partially occupied by Sorensen now. So they proceed to the door and carefully enter the floor, now our first human adults who understand the potential danger of the situation. Sam calls out, but hears the pitter-patter of little primate feet and manages to duck behind a door and observe as Shakma passes. Gary then enters the stairwell on the fourth floor, but thinking the game is still on, he declines to respond to Tracy's call, wanting to keep all of his clues to himself. This spooks her out of the stairwell to Sam, who's now facing down Shakma, and they retreat back to the stairwell, much to Shakma's annoyance. They then proceed to the sixth floor to find a phone, but all the teacher's offices are locked and the alarm is disengaged from earlier, forcing them to find another way. Down below, Shakma fuels up on Richard's corpse and then follows the sound of the footfalls above. Tracy grabs a high-intensity light strobe, hoping it will buy some time if they run across the beast, and on their way out, they just narrowly miss Gary. They head back down to look for their peers and walk in on Shakma, absolutely feasting on Dick. Tracy fires off the light with predictably poor results. Now facing down the rabid baboon, Tracy wishes she had taken Sam up on his offer of going it alone. Sam proceeds very carefully, even though he knows the danger is behind him, and works to free the elevator. After scooting by with Sorensen, they back off, hoping to keep Shakma at bay with another flash. But find the device doesn't work any better the second time. Despite this, they manage to just barely make it back to the stairwell. Wanting to add to his body collection, Sam convinces Tracy to go in and create a distraction so he can pull Dick out. She ventures in and finds the safety of a door, then begins screaming to attract Shakma's attention. The end result is even more monkey on door insanity. When he arrives, Sam realizes this was a misplaced effort, and he attempts to distract Shakma to allow Tracy to escape. Shakma, however, is no fool, and he knows this sweet and supple meat is waiting for him back in the hall. So he runs back, destroys their game console out of spite, and then works to get at Tracy, who's hiding out in the cabinet below. And she screams for help as he begins the process of disassembling her shelter. Sit! Stay, Shakma! Sam takes a calm approach, which is not recommended, so he uses the confusing layout of a double-doored office to trick Shakma and get Tracy out of there. They both just barely make it back to the stairs. Then they scream through some of their concerns with each other and decide to split up to find the others, taking some measure of solace in the assumption the beast is stuck on the fifth floor. Unable to find Bradley, Tracy modifies her walkie-talkie to get additional channels, and she manages to get through to Gary. She attempts to warn him of the danger, but being the annoying character of the movie, he takes the elevator while having the conversation about the safest way to proceed. After a brief stop off at the fifth floor, he spills out onto the sixth with an angry baboon attached to his chest. Then we get this shot before Tracy again finds safety, this time in the ladies' room, which is a smart move since he's not allowed in there. Tracy gets stuck on the idea that she needs to try to get out of there, but finds Shakma still waiting in the hall. She thinks better of her plan, retreating to the bathroom like before, but this time failing to secure the door. She attempts to make for the ducts, and much to our surprise, there's no last minute to escape here. Unless... No. Now, it's just Sam on the top floor trying to convince Kim to come out. She saunters up, eating a cheesecake, and reveals she was reluctant to emerge due to him not having the winning code word, proving her dedication to the game despite her thirst for him. So he brings her up to speed and is still under the impression there are other living people with whom they need to gather up. So Sam goes to get Tracy while Kim throws stuff out the window to try to get Laura's attention now that she's returned to pick up Richard. Although, it's not entirely clear what they think she's going to be able to do. When Sam gets back to the floor, he finds Gary beautiful corpse. Then Kim pops in from around the corner and leads him to where she found Tracy's walkie-talkie. Sam sends her off to continue her efforts to alert Laura so he can face down his destiny on his own, and he proceeds into the bathroom where, upon absorbing the grisly scene, he begins to unravel. Upstairs, Kim finds the key, a scroll that leads her to an in-game weapon that would be perfect to reach Laura, except it does not, and then Laura drives away. In her ongoing quest to find other ways to be useless, Kim scribbles down a little note and then walks off. Sam carries Tracy to the corner and gives her a little kiss. Then he moves Gary over for company, but no smooch for him. Finally, then, he acquires the keys. He goes to get Kim, but discovers she's gone to get Richard. In the specimen room, she finds the two corpses and then is leapt upon by Shakma, his bloodlust seemingly unending. As a result, when Sam arrives, he finds himself again mournfully transporting a dead woman. He has the wherewithal to enter Sorensen's office and dial 911, but not enough wherewithal to actually relay any useful information to them. No, he's made a 
choice now and succumbs to the allure of jungle rules, proceeding through the halls, greedily desiring vengeance against the unfeeling natural world. He sets a little electrical trap, and after peering around the corner at him, Shakma pursues him. When he steps in the puddle, the circuit is closed, giving him a little zap. Sam then pursues his pursuer in a manner that leaves his back vulnerable, which then results in a bloodletting contest of sorts. After this, Sam wanders off to ponder the nature of humanity in a mirror when he's stricken with an idea. He lures Shakma in by disarming himself, giving the presentation of a giant pink jungle fruit with a succulent, fleshy interior. When Shakma goes for it, this is revealed to be a mirror trick, and the monkey finds himself now locked inside the incinerator. As he's turned to ash, Sam stumbles out, surrounded by reminders of man's technological hubris, and he bleeds out, comforted in the knowledge that he won, which doesn't really mean a whole lot if you think about it. I have a website set up where you can support the channel through donations or merch. I'd like to take a moment to give a huge thanks to my donors, memorialized in the Hall of Headshots. Shockma had its moments. I wish the filmmakers didn't feel like they had to try so hard to set up all the little details up front and make sure that we saw them. It made for a sort of disjointed opening, but then it transitioned to the kind of monkey violence I'm here for. The aggression and size of the baboon was definitely unnerving. If you enjoyed the video, I'd love for you to become part of the channel by subscribing. Thanks for watching.